This week, we're gonna talk about the data debrief for the OCAT. And the debrief is where everything comes together. This is the opportunity for your team to step back, reflect on the current state of your organization's capacity, and move to action on places you decide are most critical to advancing your organization's mission. I wanna walk through three key elements that will help make your debrief successful. Preparation, running the meeting, and moving to action. Investing energy in preparation for the debrief meeting is one of the most critical things that you can do. Ensuring the logistics are confirmed, the right attendees will be joining the discussion, and allowing for sufficient time will be critical. We usually recommend about three to four hours. Perhaps most important is encouraging all of the debrief participants to review and reflect on the results on their own prior to the meeting. Asking them to set aside one to two hours of quiet time with the results and a few guiding questions goes a long way to ensure a robust debrief discussion. The goal here is to make sure participants bring an independent perspective into the room rather than simply piling on to the comments of others or trying to digest the extensive OCAT results in real time. We have included sample reflection questions in the report output, but at a high level, you are hoping participants will think in advance about questions like, what surprised me in the results? Where did my views differ sharply from others? And ultimately, where do I think we need to invest and build capacity as an organization to further our goals? And of course, as the champion of the OCAT in your organization, be sure that you invest in reviewing the results and identifying points that you want to raise or that you can use to advance the conversation. Running the meeting warrants some discussion as well. The issues surfaced by the OCAT can be thorny, so the conversation will rely on strong facilitation skills to get under the real issues identified by the OCAT. Before we talk about facilitation though, let's talk about framing the conversation well at the beginning. A few points of advice here. First, spend some time at the beginning of the meeting reconnecting with the organization's mission and goals. This can be through sharing stories of impact or reflecting on the organization's vision for the future. The goal here is to put all of the OCAT results into the context of what you're trying to do. The goal of the OCAT is not to become a high capacity organization, it is to build the capacities where you need them the most to make the biggest difference. Remembering that and your North Star as an organization is important. Along those lines, also be clear about the objectives of the meeting. Calling it an OCAT debrief has the connotation of discussion without implying any action or takeaways far better to position the discussion as a reflection on the OCAT results and a translation of those results into action. Set discussion norms that promote real conversations, even on challenging issues. Think about the ways in which your organization has effectively tackled tough topics before and try to recreate those conditions. Set specific norms about freely sharing perspectives, considering the viewpoints of others, and not moving too quickly to solutions in order to enable effective discussion. It will probably also be important to agree on the specific and agenda and timing so as to keep things moving. Once you're off and running, the challenge will be to move through the OCAT results and implications. In addition to the overall results, we have organized them in a way to help make this possible given the depth of the survey. Specifically, we have set up four categories of items. First, a set of items to step back, celebrate, and build strengths. Secondly, places where you might prioritize capacity building. Thirdly, places to build alignment and move forward. And lastly, a set of areas to discuss priority enhancements. With each, we have provided questions to help support the conversation. A few notes about this approach. First, we propose starting the discussion with reflection on strengths very intentionally. Not only does it put the conversation in a much more positive light, but it gives you a chance to think about what you do well and what has made that possible. For example, if areas of excellence are all places where the leadership team or one person in particular is personally invested, or if the strengths are in places most directly connected to your constituents, that can be instructive as you think about what it will take to build new areas of excellence. Furthermore, anchoring on areas of strengths should prompt the question of how these strengths can be put to better use in service of your mission. Second, we move to areas where you might consider prioritizing capacity building. These are areas of particularly low capacity that definitely warrant a look, as lack of capacity in these places could put the organization at risk. Next, there's an opportunity to look at items with a broad range of opinion. You may find that some in your organization see an area as a distinctive strength, while others worry about a significant gap. On these important issues, if the perspectives are all over the map, it can be very challenging. 
So do take some time to build agreement on the actual status of your current capacity before moving forward. Lastly, there's an opportunity to look at places that are neither strengths nor weaknesses, but where your team may decide improvement is needed to best serve your mission. Of course, don't feel compelled to use these categories. These are our way of helping organizations navigate an extensive set of results, but you might have an approach that will fit better for your situation. A couple tricks here in running these discussions. First, let folks reflect for two to three minutes on one of the framing questions before diving in. That can bring a broader range of views into the conversation and keeps people from coasting on the contributions of others. Ask probing questions to get deeper under folks' answers. Be sure you're getting at the root of an insight and not just staying on the surface, because the root is where the insight and the eventual action will need to be focused. For example, if someone says, we don't have the talent to get that done, you could say, well, say more about that. When you say we don't have the talent, are you referring at the leadership level? Are you referring to our staff? Or are you referring to one area in particular? Getting at the specifics will let you turn it into action. You could also ask, well, why do you think that is the case? Could it be a lack of focus? Could it be mistakes made in the past? Could it be something else about the organization that is causing that gap to remain? Asking that question and probing a little bit under the surface will help you get at the root causes that you can actually address when we turn it into action. Next, don't let the conversation move too quickly into practicalities. You'll get there, but in the early parts of the discussion, it is important not to limit the group's thinking by moving too quickly into what can and can't be done. And don't forget to include aspirational questions as well. What would be possible if we could improve capacity in this area? Sometimes encouraging folks to think about what improvement would mean for the organization and your constituents is what is really needed to help bring more energy behind that discussion. I've found it very effective to cap each part of the discussion with two or three takeaways that can be reviewed later. Oftentimes we'll capture these on flip charts and put them up in the room. That way you can start the next module fresh while not losing the momentum and insight from the prior module. Lastly, as you move towards the end of your discussion, do leave sufficient time to move to action. We will spend more time next week on developing an action plan, but a few things are worth mentioning here. First, push the group to focus on two to three high priority items to actively push forward on. Organizations typically try to do way too much and falling into that trap means they ultimately don't get anything accomplished. Agree on clear next steps, something that can be readily accomplished in the next two to three weeks. Have an owner for these important tasks as well. And of course, agree on the next touch point for progress. Will the next steps be reviewed on the next leadership meeting in a special conversation at an upcoming check-in? Be specific. Everyone should walk out of the room knowing what's gonna happen, who's gonna do it, and when we're gonna check back to make sure it's gotten done. Your enemy here is the day-to-day -day work of everyone in the room. So specific, actionable, and timely commitments that will be followed up on are essential to ensuring the OCAT discussion keeps momentum and translates into action.